This is a Rotke Mods video. Hello, I'm Greg Rotke of Rotke Mods, and welcome to episode 13 of my Mac Pro series. In this episode, I will be showing you how to enable AHCI on your Mac. A quick note, this will only work on Intel chipset Macs. If you have an NVIDIA chipset Mac, like, for instance, my early 2009 MacBook, this will not work for you, and this may mess up your Windows install. Also, this may just mess up your Windows install, period. So, take this with a cautionary note, but it is reversible if you properly do the backup. Anyway, so what is AHCI? By default, Apple does not enable AHCI on a Windows install. Because of this, Windows will only boot into IDE mode, which is a lot slower and disables a lot of features that are found in the SATA protocol. AHCI is a SATA protocol which enables faster speeds and also enables trim support for SSDs. So you would basically really want to run AHCI if you could, and you can as long as you have an Intel chipset Mac. Anyway, before we begin, I would like to recommend you do this right after you install a copy of Windows. This is because if you have already installed your boot camp software, this will mess up your boot camp software. And even though it is possible to repair the boot camp software, it is very challenging, and in fact so challenging that I wouldn't recommend doing this if you've already had your Mac set up, although you can. And this is also the reason why I am doing this video before I show you how to install Boot Camp 6. Anyway, so let's begin. First thing we want to do is download a modified MBR file, and to do this, since I have no drivers on this Windows install right now, I will need to boot into OS X. So I will begin the video back up when I have done that. I have just booted back into OS X, and I have gone to this website, Admins eHow. And here's the link. I will include that in the video description below. We need to download this file right here, patchcode.bin. We save the file, and then we find it. It's right here. Now we want to take a flash drive, like my flash drive right here, which I've named Stuff. We want to take this file and copy it over into this flash drive. Once that is finished, we will want to boot into an OS X installer. It will only work in an OS X installer. We cannot do this through a recovery partition. Okay, now I am booted into my OS X installer. In this case, it is a Lion installer because I'm running a Mac Pro 2.1. But as long as your Mac supports said installer, any installer should in theory work. Now we go up to Utilities, open up Terminal, and now we start typing in commands. We will first want to enter this command right here to list our disks. Once we do that, we will want to find our USB device and the disk drive that has our Windows installed. install on it. Our disk drive is disk 1 for my computer and we would select disk 1 here. Also our flash drive is named stuff which we will need in a second. We will now want to put this command in to direct terminal where the flash drive is and I would recommend having a flash drive with just one name with no spaces in it. If you have a flash drive with spaces in the name, you need to, for instance, put like quotations. For it to know what the drive is. 
But in my case, it's just called stuff. We hit enter. And now it knows where the drive is for the next step. Now we want to enter in this command. Quick note, this disk right here is the disk that has your Windows install on it. It may be different for you, such as disk zero. This command will allow you to make a backup of your current MBR file for your Windows disk. We hit enter and it saves it over to the flash drive. Now we want to type in this command. Once again, this drive might be different for you. Anyway, we type in this command and it unmounts the disk your Windows install is on. Now it is unmounted. Now we want to enter this command. This will write the patched MBR file over to your Windows disk and of course that disk is your Windows disk and it may be different as stated before. We hit enter and it writes it over. Now we enter this command to shut down the computer and then it restarts into Windows. Before we continue I want to let you know two things. One, if this does not work you can restore your backup MBR with a command that I will include in the description below and what you do is you just follow all these steps down to where you backed it up instead of backing it up right here we skip that step and we just go down to here and we change this to backup bin I'll give you the um, commands in the description anyway when we shut it down when Windows starts to boot back up, it will blue screen. Do not panic. This is because Windows was installed with drivers that were for IDE. And now Windows has drivers for SATA. But because of this, Windows doesn't know how to boot. And we will have to restart the computer three times and force it into safe mode which I will show you step by step. And once it's in safe mode, it resets all drivers, it disables any drivers that were in it to boot into it, and then safe mode will install the SATA drivers and allow Windows to boot up. Let's continue. The computer starts booting into Windows, and as stated before, you will get a blue screen. This is reboot number one. Here is the blue screen. Now the computer will restart again and the same thing will happen. Here is reboot number two. And we get the same blue screen. Now on the third restart, the computer will, will kick into repair mode. And here is reboot three it is going into automatic repair. It will start diagnosing the boot sequence and then go into automatic repair. From here we have to select advanced options, troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings. Click restart and the computer will once again reboot. The computer now boots into the advanced startup settings. We will choose number four for safe mode and it will start booting into safe mode. Once it starts loading into safe mode we need to give it about a minute or two to reconfigure everything. Once that occurs, we can now restart the Mac again. Now Windows will start booting normally.
and it boots into the desktop. Now if we go to manage and then device manager we can now go down to IDE ATA and there we have it the standard SATA AHCI controller now you can go and install your respective Intel chipset driver for more reliability anyway that is the conclusion of this episode and in the next video episode 14 I will be covering how to install Boot Camp 6 in Windows 10 for unsupported Macs. Thank you for watching and this has been a Rutke Mods video.